Hey everyone, let's review another GPU that you probably won't be able to buy. And if you can, not at the price it's meant to be. It's RTX 3060 time. Let's do this. The Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset from Corsair. With a sleek premium lightweight design, comfortable memory foam ear cups, and subtle RGB lighting, it doesn't look like your typical gaming headset. With a detachable broadcast grade microphone, patented slipstream wireless technology, and tuned 50mm neodymium premium drivers, it's simply the best headset Corsair have ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Now, I used to love reviewing graphics cards, but lately I've been left with a slightly hollow outlook as our YouTube and social media comments are plagued with people telling us how we have all of the cards and how they can't get their hands on the card they want. And this primarily revolves around the RTX 3080. But with lower models in the stack like the 3070 and the 3060 Ti, it's pretty much the same story. But at least price-wise, it's more within reach, although still not at the prices Nvidia claimed with their MSRP. Now with the GTX 1060 still being, at the time of recording this, the most popular GPU on the Steam hardware survey, Nvidia believe that the RTX 3060 is the successor in bringing 1080p 60fps to the masses with all of the latest technologies like ray tracing, DLSS and much more. They believe it's the next evolutionary step in today's latest titles. They also claim the 3060 to be twice the performance of the GTX 1060 and in a weird way, 10 times the ray tracing performance. I mean, considering the 1060 doesn't have the ability for ray tracing, 10 times zero is, well, it's still zero, my friends. Either way, let's find out and uh, yeah, get those benchmarks out of the way.
Now, before the RTX 3060 launched, I was a little bit confused, as I think most people were, as it kind of sits under the 3060 Ti, but has more memory and faster cores, albeit less of them. For a quick comparison, the RTX 3060 has less CUDA cores at 3584 compared to the 4864 on the 3060 Ti, but the cores are faster with a boost clock of 1.78 GHz compared to 1.67 GHz on the Ti. The base clock is slightly lower though at 1.32 GHz compared to 1.41 on the Ti. But the more confusing part is the memory, as the 3060 comes with 12 gig of GDDR6, but on a 192 bit memory interface, compared to the measly eight gig on the TI, which operates on a 256 bit bus. So I guess this further instills speculation that a revised TI could come at a later date with more memory, but at what price? I mean, who knows? Obviously, being an RTX based card, we still get all of the latest features that Nvidia's Ampere architecture brings to the table, like DLSS, ray tracing, thanks to the RT cores, as well as reflex and broadcast features. Now, another thing that was recently announced is resizable bar, which you may actually be familiar with, even if you don't realize. Very similar to when we tested SAM or smart access memory on AMD's latest cards. Resizable bar is available on the RTX 3060 to start and is being worked on in conjunction with AIB partners along with both AMD and Intel and their motherboard partners. Due to the time that we had to kind of get this video out and getting the driver late, uh, it's definitely sort of something we'll look at doing in the future, but we didn't really get time. And this could actually give quite a sizable performance increase over the, let's call it stock performance. So Nvidia aside, let's talk about the different models that we've actually got here, the ones that we tested. So we've got the Gaming OC from Gigabyte and the Gaming X Trio from MSI. And no, you won't find any RTX 3060 founders cards as Nvidia have decided not to make one. Obviously there will be <clears throat> MSRP based cards, which are meant to come in at 299 pounds in the UK and $329 in the US. <laughs> yeah, right. For the two cards here, the Gigabyte comes in at £428.99, while the MSI comes in at £449.99, so nowhere near the £299 MSRP. For those in the US, simply turn that pound sign into a dollar sign and you'll be roughly at the right figure. Sucks, right? Boost clock wise, which is where they differ, the MSI comes in at 1852 MHz, while the Gigabyte comes in at 1837. So how did they compare when it comes to raw performance? Well, the RTX 3060 clearly beat the GTX 1060 by quite some margin, as Nvidia claimed. Compared to the 2060 Super, which I feel is the more appropriate one to use as a comparison because of you know similar features like ray tracing and DLSS. Well, then the fight was a lot closer. And remember, the RTX 2060 Super actually launched at $399. When compared to the 3060 Ti, which remember has less memory, slower cores, but more of them, the 3060 sits below it as you kind of expect, I guess. But where it sits is just niggling me just a little bit. I get it, it has to be separated away from the Ti to make that, I don't know, kind of make it a viable option. But where it sits with the RTX 2070 and the 2060 Super is just a little bit frustrating. I mean, it sits above the 2060 Super in general rasterization, but well, not by much. And really it's only at 4K where it starts to pull ahead, likely because of the large amount of VRAM. But is this enough? Well, Nvidia would argue that the 2060 Super launched for $399 and this is launching for $329, but you won't be able to get one at that price. So that point is completely irrelevant. Looking at how it compares to the 2070, which had a launch price of $499, I guess you could argue that it sits below that in both monetary value and performance. Where things do get a bit different is when it comes to ray tracing and DLSS. But I know the whole market isn't completely sold on these technologies, but it's hard to really deny because well, all of the latest games come with both technologies available. So I guess if you can't beat them, join them. And with AMD readying up their own technologies to combat Nvidia's market share in these areas, maybe, just maybe, it's time to jump on board. So the other key thing, as mentioned, is resizable bar, which while we didn't get time to test for this video, we will definitely be looking to sort of delve into it in the future and see what impact it has on performance, much like we did with AMD and its own smart access memory functionality. Though I guess the benefit with this is it's gonna work on both AMD and Intel straight out of the gate. 
So if you're happy with the results, what one do you go for? Well, the MSI is the quieter of the two cards, as we'd normally expect from a Gaming X Trio, but you will pay more for it. Though the Gigabyte isn't, I guess, noticeably louder, only four decibels higher. Power consumption wise, they're pretty much on par, even though the MSI has a second power connector compared to the single eight pin on the Gigabyte. The MSI is also slightly cooler, but again, you'll pay a bit more for it and you'd kind of expect it, it's bigger. The Gigabyte kind of sits where it always, I don't know, where we always expect it to be, that comfortable kind of middle ground. So if these cars launched anywhere close to MSRP, I guess I'd be singing off a completely different hymn sheet right now. But the increase in price across all major components makes it a slightly tougher one to swallow, especially for those looking to upgrade, knowing what you paid for your 10 or 20 series cards. But if however you are new to PC gaming and I guess the PC master race as a whole, then I guess it's a slightly easier pill to swallow as you have the choice of either joining the PC gaming world or well, just don't. Whatever you go with, be prepared to pay extra for it, even on, well, used hardware. It's a complete mess right now. Although I do wanna say, don't get me wrong, the RTX 3060 is a great card, but it's not a $450 great card, especially if you're upgrading. But that will get better, I guess, as months go on and prices start to normalize again. When that is, however, is, well, anyone's guess. Right now, I'm being told from retailers and distributors at least July. So sorry, guys, you're gonna have to wait. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Were you prepared to upgrade to a 3060, but that extra $100 on top of MSRP is just putting you off? And even then, it all comes down to if stock is even available. <sighs> what a sorry state of affairs. It really is bad, and I feel for you guys. I really, really do. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, you know exactly what to do. And remember to check out the merch store at store.etechnics.com, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.